Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. This webinar is called There's Nothing Wrong With You, Why From Women Are Conflicted About Sales and How to Get Past Your Biggest Blocks to Financial Freedom. So who is this webinar for? Well, this is for you if you want to stop living paycheck to paycheck, but you don't know if there's a realistic way to do that without compromising your availability to your children or your family. This is for you if you believe you have to sacrifice financially in order to be aligned with your values. For example, if you want to live a cool lifestyle or if you want to be a spiritual person, or if you want to stay home with your children, you can't do that at the same time as having or making enough money to be very comfortable. But you're also not sure you can really keep doing that, that you can really keep sacrificing. At a certain point, it starts to take a toll. This is for you if you feel depleted, trying to juggle being a breadwinner and a homemaker at the same time. It really puts a lot of role strain on us when we're trying to be all these things at once and wear so many different hats. This is also for you if your feminine side feels out of alignment because you're trying to make money in a masculine world and you can't keep up. So if your soft side is feeling like it's getting suppressed, if your nurturing side, if you wish to mother, to be a wife, to let down your guard and relax, if all of that is hard because you're in this very driven, um powerful kind of mode very ambitious mode trying to make it in the business world you might be feeling kind of out of alignment and this is also for you if you don't want to have to be committed to an office job or long hours away from home but you really do need to bring in money for the family this is for you if you have a business idea but you don't know where to start and you don't know if you have the time, energy, or resources to really start a new business. So perhaps you've been thinking to yourself, I really need to um, do something on the side or have a business from home, bring in some more money for my family. I just don't know what I want to do. And I don't really know how big it is, how big of a deal it is to try to start a business. I don't know if I could succeed. So you're kind of thinking about it, but you don't really have a crystallized idea yet. This is also for you if you know you should start some sort of business, just don't know what it should be. So you've kind of already decided that you're going to start a business, but you haven't come up with the right product or service that you want to sell yet. This is also for you if you have a business already, but you're not making as much money as you'd like and you feel drained from all your efforts to keep boosting sales. So you've already put yourself out there, you have a business, you have something that you're trying to sell, but it's just not going as easily or smoothly as you want it to, and it's a constant effort to try to bring in more money with your business. This is also for you if you have a business but, but find that you really dread the sales piece of it. So it could be that you're even making sales and you're doing well in your business, but you're really dragged down by the feelings that come up for you around having to make sales calls, deal with rejection, put yourself out there. It just doesn't feel that good. And this is also for you if you just feel depleted in general and you don't really see a way out. This is for you if you wanna have enough money to keep up with your kids' tuitions, give to DACA, pay for summer camp, get your kids tutoring or other services if they need it. So you really want to have enough money but you want money for important things, things that are important for your family. This is for you if you're overwhelmed by the demands on your time and money. And perhaps you also may feel conflicted between your ideal picture of what you would want your life to look like versus the practical demands that seem to be constantly asking for more and more of you. It might be that sometimes you feel like you have to be superwoman to keep up to keep up with expenses that just keep getting bigger every year, to keep up with more and more demands on your time, 
to keep up maybe with kids who are getting older and want more of you rather than less of you. And you may even start to shut down and feel depressed or let certain things go when everything feels like too much. Even though you remember times in your life when you actually felt so energized and productive and you wish you could get that back. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today in this webinar. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how to shift your mindset from one in which you feel you have to sacrifice to one in which you feel there's room for all of you. So right now you might be feeling like you don't have a lot of choices, like there's a lot of pressures placed on you from outside of yourself and that you're just trying to survive or keep up, but that it's really not feeling like your life is balanced or you're living the kind of lifestyle that you wanna be leading or that you're having time for self-care or for doing things that feel good. We're also gonna talk about how to view sales as a divine exchange rather than a power play and how to approach your business from your feminine side. So we're gonna talk about how to view sales. When I say a divine exchange, what I mean is that sales are a way that Hashem brings people together in a sort of mutual give and take exchange. So if I sell a service to somebody, I have something they need and I in turn, take money, which allows me to have something that I need. And it's a way that Hashem brings people together to help each other. We're also gonna talk about how to give yourself the support you need to leverage your energy reserves and resources in the most efficient way possible. So you no longer feel depleted all the time. When you're just constantly trying to keep up and you're very burnt out and there's just so much more to do than the hours in the day or the energy that you have or the money that you have, it can be very hard to see ways to replenish some of your reserves or feel like you have enough or see some of the resources in front of you. So we're gonna talk about that piece a little bit too. And we're also gonna talk about how to approach feelings of discouragement when you feel frustrated about not getting the results you're looking for in order that you don't have to give up or shut down. There's nothing for sale today. I'm going to offer you two free gifts at the end of this webinar. I'm going to give you some insights that will help you shift the way you think about things. And I'm going to give you permission to use your strengths and to create a lifestyle that feels good for you and is also aligned with your values. Does this sound like you? You feel passionate about Yiddishkeit and about your role as a Jewish woman. You're willing to take a stand for what you believe in and you want to do what's right, even if it's hard. Is this you? You're a growth-oriented person, constantly asking yourself if there's more you should be doing or striving for. You want to be the best mother possible and to give your kids a very healthy childhood. You're not very materialistic, but you know you need money to be able to do the things that are important in life. How about this? Are you a person who finds it hard to make time for yourself and to do the things that make you feel good without feeling guilty about it? Are you the kind of person that when people in your life start to question you, you wonder if maybe you're missing something and they're right? And are you a person who wants to have a healthy relationship with money, but you're just not sure where that fits in with everything else? Are you someone who juggles a lot? Are you pulled in many different directions and do you wear many different hats? Again, this creates a huge role strain on us women. Do you sometimes shut down or lose motivation when it feels like things are not working out the way you hoped you would, you hoped they would? This can be really hard because sometimes we use that as evidence that we're not gonna succeed or make it if we try to do something that we want to do. We kind of tell ourselves, look, you're not even motivated to do what you have to do now. How could you take on a new business idea or something else? And are you a person who finds it hard not to compare yourself to other people? Do you kind of look at the next person and think to yourself, you know, how do they seem to manage everything? Or, you know, how do they seem to, to do what I can't manage to do? So what I wanna tell you today is that the real problem is that you haven't learned a way to align all the different parts of yourself and your, and your life in a way that feels good to you. 
It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's not that you're someone who gets depressed or can't keep up like other people. It's really that there's all these um, pressures being placed on you and you don't know a way to navigate them and take control of all the pressures in a way that that's smooth and that lets you really steer yourself in, into places that feel right and feel good. You need a way to integrate your femininity with your business. So you need a way to be able to have a business and make money while still tapping into your soft side, your wish to nurture, your ability to connect and to be relationship oriented. You need a way to integrate your spirituality with your desire to make money. So a lot of us have ideas in our head that if we want to be a spiritual person, we can't have money. There are even, you know, the Sukkim and the Torah that, you know, that say something to this effect. And so, so when we view it as a choice we have to make, that we could either be, you know, a good spiritual person or we could be someone that has money and materialism, it, it's hard to really embrace the money-making role. So that's a conflict that has to be worked through. You need a way to integrate your lifestyle with your values. Mm -hmm. So you need to find a way to have a lifestyle that feels good, but that's also aligned with the kind of life you want to be leading, what is important to you. And you need a good way to integrate your personality with your time, right? So to be spending your time doing things that fit well with who you are as a person. And so the solution that I'm about to give you to share with you is going to involve a few things. One is how to shift your mindset from a scarcity mindset to an abundance-based mindset. And I'm going to, of course, explain more about what that means too. I'm also going to talk to you about how to leverage your resources in ways that support rather than deplete your reserves. We're going to talk about how to stop yourself from shutting down when you don't see results. because That can be very, very frustrating and discouraging and how to adopt a more feminine approach to your business. And I am also going to give you permission to let yourself be inspired and to follow your dreams. After you apply the framework that I'm gonna share with you today, you'll feel energized and hopeful about the idea of having your own business as well as bringing in more income. You'll move from feeling like a victim of societal pressures to a person who has options. You'll be able to make changes in how you view your core resources, which are energy, time, and money. And you'll also feel that it's possible to integrate sides of yourself and your life in ways that pull everything together into a beautiful whole. So let me, let me now tell you a little bit about myself, just so you get to know me a little bit. This is my high school graduation. I grew up in Denver, Colorado. This is me with some of my family. And this is me at my wedding. Um, I was 19 at the time. I was just for 19. I actually got divorced later, but my wedding was still a very happy day. So you can, you can see me there. This is me when I had my first son. I believe that was by his Kaduna Ben. And this is me with my children at one of their birthday parties. And I guess this must have been one of their graduations. This is me with my niece, my first niece when she was born. And this is me with my two sons by my older son's bar mitzvah. And this is my sons today, and this is me just a few weeks ago, just to kind of bring you up to speed. So here's a little bit about me professionally. I've been a psychotherapist for the past 15 years. I'm a graduate of Columbia University. I've worked in hospitals, jails, schools, residential settings, private practice. I've been everywhere in my professional life. I have studied business and marketing in various venues for the past 10 years. I'm a writer. I have a blog on therapy that I write. I also wrote a book and I've published some articles I actually forgot to put in here that I'm also a teacher. I teach college courses on psychology and parenting. And I currently have my own psychotherapy practice, which I love. And now I wanted to start a coaching business on the side so I can do something remotely when I travel. So I have a way to kind of work while I'm on the go, as well as empower from women to have successful businesses. I know what it's like 
to be a working mother and to be pulled in two very different directions at the same time. I worked for many years in jobs that were stressful and depleting. I felt frustrated that I couldn't make my own schedule or that I had to constantly be worrying about using up vacation time for Yentif. I felt guilty because I was caught between my career goals and being there for my children, especially as a single mom. And I kept trying different strategies to get my therapy business to where I wanted it to be, which was I wanted my therapy business to bring in enough income for me to leave my hospital job at the time. But I was frustrated with all the marketing stuff. I was trying to learn it, but it was, it was hard. And I also struggled with my identity at times because I never really saw myself as a businesswoman. I always thought of myself as, you know, a therapist, a teacher, a mother, a writer, but the business piece didn't really feel like me. And I didn't have a good process for making sales in a way that felt good to me. However, I figured out what worked and you can do that too. I learned how to use my time doing the things that energize me the most and how to delegate the rest. I learned feminine, softer ways of approaching business and sales that started to feel more in alignment with who I am. I learned to trust my intuition and to be open to opportunities that Hashem brings my way. I learned, and I'm still working on it, how to be less worried when I don't see immediate results in response to my efforts. I learned how to move from a place of fear about money to a place of trust in Hashem. Of course, that's an ongoing process working on that. And I also learned that I can have my own business doing what I love and spend my time in ways that feel good to me without sacrificing anything. And that was a key insight that I really always wanted to believe, but really didn't. I really thought that wasn't possible, that you really can't have what you want. You have to sacrifice something. And it feels so nice to find out that that really wasn't true. So I said I wasn't going to sell anything today, but I am going to tell you a little bit about a couple of coaching programs I have at the end, just in case it's something that can be helpful to you. I will never push you to purchase one of my coaching programs, but I will make you aware of it in case it's something that can help you. So at the end of the webinar, I'm going to share with you two amazing coaching options that I have to offer you. At the end of this webinar, I'm going to offer you two free gifts as I promised. And in this webinar, I'm going to give you some great tips and key insights without trying to sell you anything. So let's get going. Okay, so problem number one that I want to talk to you about is dualities that put us in conflict. We have all been conditioned or raised to believe that there are certain things that are mutually exclusive. They just can't go together. It's like either or. And some of those things have put us in a place of conflict. So we were taught, for example, or we were sort of conditioned to believe that if we want to make money, we have to sacrifice other aspects of our identity, that there's some piece of ourself that has to be given up if we become a businesswoman. We were taught that if we want to live an idealistic life, for example, supporting a husband in Kulel, we have to learn to live on little and to sacrifice. We have to be prepared to sacrifice financially. We were taught that money and spirituality or a life of ideals don't go together. And we often believe that women who make money or succeed in business are domineering, aggressive, high-powered people. And the solution to this inner conflict that comes from feeling like there are mutually exclusive realities and that we have to make a choice is a key mindset shift. So I don't know if you've heard of a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. I don't know if that concept is familiar to you. It was a real game changer when I learned about this and I want to share it with you today. So a scarcity mindset means that a person approaches the world as if there are limited resources. There's not enough for everybody. And from a place of competition, we have to grab our piece of the pie or someone's going to take it from us. We have to go get what we need, because if we don't go get it now, then somebody else could take it away and it will no longer be available. There's an either or feeling, right? We can, we can either have it or the other person can have it. There's not enough for both. There can be a feeling of aggression, right? I need to grab something or take something or make sure I get something because otherwise someone else is going to take it away from me. 
And there could be a feeling of there's never enough or I'll run out of money or I'm not going to have enough leader or what if it doesn't work out or what if, you know, what if I run out? There's this constant fear of um, not having enough. And scarcity doesn't only apply to money. It can apply to food. It can apply to time. We can, it can apply to relationships. It can apply to anything. The feeling of not having enough or having to compete or having to get what you need right now because otherwise you may never get it or worrying that you can't share, you need to compete. All that is part of a scarcity mindset. In an abundance mindset, the belief is that there's enough to go around. Hashem isn't limited. The more you give, the more you get, right? That is safe to share. That sharing creates abundance. That wanting more creates more. That there's going to be enough. That if you need more, you're going to be able to have more. So it's, a, it's an enough kind of feeling. And there's a trusting sense. And there's a feeling of being patient and not being fearful all the time about running out or not having enough. But there's a feeling of expansiveness. And, um, and you know, I have enough. I have enough time, I have enough money, I have enough energy. If I don't have enough right now, I'll be able to get more. Hashem can give me more. So there are some key concepts that have helped me that kind of go along with all this. Um, one idea is that the more amuna we have, the more shefa or abundance we create. And here's a quote from a blog post by Miriam Cosman that I love. She writes, it's a rule of nature that a vacuum gets filled up and it's the depth of the ache that we feel, the amount of hole we allow in our lives, which will determine the level of revelation we merit. By allowing ourselves to yearn to feel the lack in our lives, we actually draw revelation into our world. When a nursing mother doesn't have enough milk, the lactation counselor will tell her to keep nursing the baby as much as possible. This is counterintuitive. If there isn't enough milk, maybe what's left should be rationed. But the opposite is true. The more the baby hungers, the more milk there will be. The depth of the vacuum determines the abundance. So there is this concept that um, the more a person is able to contain or desire or want to receive, the more abundance that creates. And that we have this relationship with Hashem where the more we trust in him and desire, the more he's able to give to us. And we have to make ourselves into that container for that abundance by opening ourselves up to wanting more and to believing we can have more and to desiring and, and waiting for more. So there's a need to um, create a space where you have a wish or a lack or an emptiness that needs to be filled and trusting that that can be filled and really trusting in Hashem and that desire is what creates what is needed to fill that void. I've also been thinking about the relationship between a giver and receiver and how there's a mutuality there. That when we do business, we engage in a divine exchange, which I mentioned before briefly, which is about reciprocity and mutuality rather than power dynamics or domination. So in a divine exchange, the idea is that Hashem brings two people together to do business with each other so that each can share with the other something that they're meant to give to the other person. That one person has one thing that the other needs and the other has what the other person needs and Hashem brings you together because he wants you to connect and to have this exchange. And there's a feeling of equality and mutuality that we're each helping each other in some way. You're giving me money, I'm giving you a service, for example. And it's not about being pushy or aggressive or trying to force something onto someone and you know make them take it so that I can get something. And it's not ego-driven where... I'm looking to sell so I can get money, but it's much more service driven that I'm looking to be able to give you what I have to offer you to share my gift with you, which you need and can help you and transform you in response for something that you're going to give to me that's going to allow me to have what I need. So it's actually a beautiful um, exchange that takes place when two people come together in a really nice way to share what they each have with each other. And there are also intuitive feminine ways to sell that are about service rather than ego. So you, didn't, you do need a process for this and you need to help a way to help people through their ambivalence about purchasing because people do go through a certain um, stage of fear or mixed feelings before they allow themselves to buy something that's going to change them or make something better for them, right? We're always 
um, a little bit attached to what we're used to. And so when we want to make a big purchase or commitment or um, move towards a change, there is a kind of fear that kicks in. And so we do need to know how to talk someone through this. Um, that is part of the sales process, but that's not about um, manipulating them or forcing them or convincing them to buy something or proving that we have something they need. It's much more about allowing them to process, well, do they need what we have to offer? And if they do, allowing ourselves to offer it to them and helping them become receptive to that. And if they don't, you know, letting it go or maybe pointing in the direction of something else that might be helpful to them. I do this in my therapy business all the time when somebody calls me and they're not the right client for me or I'm not the right therapist for them. I always try to be of service. I always try to give them a really good referral or point them in the direction of what they do need. Um, it's just a nice way to, to do business. And another thing you can do is you can learn how to write resonant ads that speak to the hearts and desires of your ideal customers. So instead of writing ads that are designed to sell or to kind of prove yourself or push people to buy, you can really just speak from the heart and show what you have to offer and allow yourself to pull towards you like a magnet the people who really need what it is that you have. Another thing I want to say is that you really don't need to prove yourself in business and you shouldn't try. It just doesn't feel good. And now there are ways of doing business that allow you to be natural. You shouldn't try to fit into a box that isn't right for you. For example, if you're, outgo if you're trying to be outgoing when you're really shy, you don't need to do that. You don't need to be someone you're not. You don't need to be very pushy when you really have a much softer personality. There are really ways in 2018 to work with whoever you are as a person and to put yourself out there in a way that's very authentic and very natural, and to still be able to make money at the same time. I also wanna tell you to own your worth and let it speak for itself, to really know who are you meant to serve? What is your gift to the world? What sets you apart from other people? What is it that you have to offer that nobody else really has to offer in quite the same way? And you should feel very um, proud of that and good about that and, and very pleased be able to give to the world what it is that you have inside of you and just allow that to speak for itself. There will be people out there that will want what you have. There will also be people that you won't be their person. You know, they'll need what someone else has to offer and, and that's fine too, but there's enough for everyone. And there are people out there that are going to be just right for you. They're going to be your ideal customer. And in the same vein, I wanna tell you, don't compare yourself to other people. Really, don't compare yourself. You are in this world for a reason that has nothing to do with them. You are here with your own special gift. Hashem wants you to be here for a reason. And if you can tap into what is inside of you to offer, then that is really the best way to approach your business from a place of, you know, what is my gift to the world? What product do I have? What service do I have? Who am I and what is it that I can bring to the table? So in terms of making the shift to an abundance mindset, um, here are a few things that you can tell yourself or remind yourself to try to make that shift. One is that I can have enough time, enough money, and enough energy because Hashem is not limited. So I don't need to be in a mindset where I have to give up one for the other or I really can never have enough. I'm always running behind or feeling burnt out or trying to catch up or keep up. Really, Hashem has enough to give us enough in all the domains of our life. We have to trust Him and ask Him for it in a way that is compelling enough that He gives it to us. But Hashem has enough. He has enough to give us. The other thing is that the world today allows for new ways of having choices and options about how to bring in money that were not true before. So there were times in history where we did have to make certain sacrifices in order to bring income. If a woman wanted to be the breadwinner in the family, most likely she had to go get an office job and work nine to five or be in a corporate environment. She wanted to have a certain kind of income and that would require a certain sacrifice of you know, maybe being home for her family or um, allowing her softer side to shine through. But today, a lot of those um, choices are no longer necessary. There are options and ways for people to make money um, that honor so many different styles and not only the masculine way in business, but also the feminine way. 
And the other thing is to remind yourself that you can design your lifestyle to create balance around your priorities. You can take charge. You can be in control. First, you have to know what you want, and then you have to find realistic, balanced ways to try to make that happen. But you can take control. You don't have to be passive about the kind of lifestyle you want to lead. Some other things you can tell yourself or remind yourself are that Hashem will give me what I need to feel I have enough because he is not limited. That Hashem will bring me to the people who are meant to engage with me in some type of exchange. I really believe this in my own business. I believe that Hashem brings me the right people. Some are people that I'm meant to just have a brief encounter with. Maybe I learn something from them. Maybe I give them a referral or some sort of help. But I believe that the customers who are meant to engage with me in a process that's going to be transformative for them are really brought to me by Hashem. And I take it that seriously. You can also remind yourself that you can make money while still being aligned with your values. There are ways to do that. And that you can make money in ways that are comfortable for your personality and for your feminine side. And here are some additional ways to practice having an abundant mindset. One is to focus on what you already have. There's so much we already have that when we're constantly feeling like we need more or we don't have enough, sometimes we forget how rich we already are. Number two, give to others because it will make you feel abundant. Even if it's just, you know, I started doing something recently. I decided that when the envelopes come to me um, for Tzedaka, I'm just going to give a small amount to every single one that comes. We know that. So I've been trying to do that. It just puts me in a frame of giving. Even if I don't have a lot to give, it, it makes you feel like you have what to give. So that's also a great way to put yourself in an abundant frame of mind. Practice gratitude all the time, right? Gratitude is acknowledging what we have already and saying thank you for that. And realize that resources come in many forms and shapes. So we may not um, feel abundant with how much money we have, for example, but there may be a lot of other things in our life that we do have that create abundance for us. And sometimes we forget to acknowledge those things because it's not in the exact um, form that we're, you know, that we think we need it to be. But, but there are a lot of ways that we have, re we tap into resources and that we feel abundant in our lives. And I really do want to encourage you to create your vision for what it would look like to have enough money, enough time, and enough energy in your life. Create that vision for yourself and start working towards it. So the second thing I'm going to talk to you about today is getting help and leveraging your resources. Um, there's a money coach. Her name is Morgan Guerin, and I took this um, from a class that she gave. She says that time, money, and energy are all resources. I think sometimes we forget that. We think we need um, more money, but we don't realize that we actually um, we need to feel abundant in terms of our time as well and our energy. And that money and energy are resources that can get replenished. You can always make more money or get more energy, but time you can never get back. So time is an extremely valuable resource, and you really want to focus on how time fits into your ideal lifestyle, how you want to be spending your time. And there may be certain financial choices that you make or choices about um, your energy or, or how, you want to, you know, how you want to use some of your energy reserves that really have to do with creating the ability to spend your time in the way that is most important to you. And I want to encourage you to figure out which activities in your day give you the most bang for your buck. What energizes you? Which things do you do easily and in flow? And what are your priorities? When we, we all have things that put us in our flow that are very energizing for us. They're effortless. They're easy. They're very much our... They're, they're our nature. They're just things that are very natural for us. And when you're doing those kinds of things, most of the time, you end up getting so much more done because you're not depleting yourself um, with things that really go against who you are as a person. It's like you're not swimming upstream all the time. And so, so much more happens when you're in that flow. So for example, I know for myself that running errands is very depleting for me. Um, being on the phone, you know, for hours with doctor's offices or insurance companies or whoever, that is something very depleting for me. It, I don't get a lot out of it and it takes so, so, so much out of me. So I have learned to delegate that. 
to just have my assistant do those things. And I spend time doing the things that energize me. I like to, um, to write. I like to focus on my business. I like to do therapy. I like to spend time with my children. Um, I like to cook some of the time. So I have certain things that are, are very energizing for me. And I try to focus more on leveraging my limited resources for the things that are really inside my own comfort zone and my flow. And the other thing is to figure out which things replenish your energy. What are those things that pick you up, that boost your energy, that really get you going, that light you up? And to be able to really use some of those activities to create more energy in your life and to feel like you, you have more to sort of get yourself going. Because once, when you're in that flow, when you're in that energized state, it's much easier to get things done and things get done much more quickly than if you're tired or unmotivated or dragged down or you're doing something that you really hate doing. Those things take out a lot, lot, lot of energy from us. And if we can get some of those things to be done by someone else or put them on the side, that can really help you feel much less depleted in your life. Um, so there, the other thing is really seeing if there are ways to get help. I personally have a personal assistant. I feel like it has changed my life forever. I encourage everyone if this could help you to consider that someone that you know, maybe runs your errands or makes phone calls for you or, you know, returns packages that you ordered online or buys your food, whatever it is. Maybe you're a person who needs cleaning help. Maybe cleaning is really just not your thing and you're spending so much time dreading having to clean that if that energy got freed up, you would be able to get so much more done or even make more money because you have more energy. Maybe you need to buy takeout food. You're not a cook really important to know your limits and to know which places you're just better off to delegate or to get the help from somewhere else and to be able to pay people to do the things that take the most energy out of you and sometimes there are ways to identify easy ways to solve your biggest time and energy drainers right it might just be learning a few recipes that are very very quick so that you're spending much less time cooking it might be automating something in your business just um you know, creating some sort of system where it kind of runs itself or takes care of itself. So you're not having to go through everything all the time on your own. There's different ways, but if you could find ways to try to, um, to just, you know, solve some of your, your time and energy drain drainers, that can be very helpful. And the other thing I want to say is that for women, it's very, very helpful to learn to follow your rhythm. You're going to have times where you're very energized as a woman. And you're also gonna have times in your cycles where you're tired or low, or it's really like it's your nighttime as a woman. In those times, you're not gonna get as much done. And so if you allow yourself to rest and to put less pressure on yourself and to adjust your schedule for the times when you know and you come to expect, you're gonna be kind of at the lower end of your energy then you'll get so much more done when you end up being in a flow that allows you to you know, be productive, right? That if you follow your own rhythm, you're really working with yourself and not against, against your flow. So that's a really, really important insight. So here are a few more resource management tips. Um, create systems so you don't use up energy figuring out things that could be systematized. So for example, with organization, if you have, um, your toys organized in a certain way and you don't have to think about it every time you clean up. You just know what goes where. Or if you have a system for doing your laundry so you don't have to think every week about how you're gonna <clears throat> sort your laundry or um, get all the laundry done or when you're gonna do the whites and the colors or the kids or yours, right? If you don't have to think about all that stuff because you have a ritual or you know what you're gonna make for dinner every night of the week because it's the same every week, the more you can systematize things you're gonna save a lot of mental energy by doing that. So if there are places in your life where you could create routines or systems, really try to look at that. And this applies to business as well. You can automate a lot of things, right? There are money trackers that can track your spending for you. Um, I have an online system that keeps track of my billing and invoices, and how many sessions people come from, and that sends them reminders. So there are a lot of different things that you can do to automate things so that you are not having to do everything yourself all the time. 
Another really important insight that I want to offer you is to make decisions quickly and don't look back. When you leave things hanging, it drains a huge amount of energy. So if, especially when it comes to the little things in life where it doesn't really matter either way, instead of saying, you know, putting this email in the folder and saying, oh, I'll decide later if I want to buy that thing or call that person or respond to that or whether I want to go out with my friend or not or whether I'm going to go to the grocery store or not go, instead of leaving all these decisions on hold, just make a decision and decide on the spot or very soon after what you're going to do and then do it and don't look back because having undecided things in your life creates all this clutter that really could take a lot out of you. And also take care of other loose ends that are weighing on you. So if you have bills that are unpaid, if you have phone calls that are not returned, if you have things that are piling up and are just kind of always sitting there in the back of your mind because you know they're not done yet, bang them out. Start now. Pick one thing tonight and just um, just go for it. Get it done. Put it away. Right? So try to mentally declutter by getting things done and tying up loose ends. Okay, so the third thing I want to talk to you about today is results, right? We all get so frustrated and discouraged when we try so hard to invest in an idea we have or to try to get our business to work or to make more money, boost our sales, whatever it is, and we feel like we don't see results and we start to doubt ourselves or get discouraged or impatient. And so I want to talk to you about that. And what I want to say is that the masculine approach is to be very linear about seeing a direct cause effect relationship between one's efforts and results. It's sort of like you break it down into like a sequence. I'm going to do step A, B, and C, and I'm going to get to B. But really in the feminine mode, we realize that it doesn't always really go that way. Things can happen in a much more mysterious, intuitive, um, open kind of way that you can't always plan out ahead of time how things are going to go. What you do is you put yourself in a receptive mode to be open to what comes your way. You prepare yourself and you put in some effort, you plant some seeds, you do some shtadlas, and then you allow Shem to bring it to you in the way that he sees fit. So it's this much more open, receptive kind of mode where we're not driven to make a certain outcome happen through a certain series of steps, but we're much more open to creating a sense of receptivity and planting seeds and allowing those seeds time to grow and then allowing, allowing what needs to happen to come to us and being open to it. And I want to encourage you not to be attached, too attached so give an idea, effort, or process because Hashem may have a totally different way of bringing you what you need. That's why I say let go and let God. So maybe um, you know that you need more parnasa, more income, and you have a great business idea and you're putting in all this effort to make your business idea work. Maybe he brings you the money or puts an opportunity in front of you that's not really what you would have thought of on your own or what you expected, but you have to have that openness to notice, oh, wait a second. Here it is, right? This wasn't how I planned on it happening, but Hashem is giving it to me right here in this form. And so there needs to be a certain kind of openness and intuitiveness and receptivity in order to be in that frame of mind. And I want to encourage you not to get frustrated if you don't see a direct correlation between the efforts you're putting in and like an immediate, you know, effort or response because it doesn't always work that way. But if you're planting seeds and you're being genuine and you're really trying and you're putting in the right effort and you're getting the right help and you're davening and you're trusting in Hashem, I really feel that the results will happen. They will happen in the right time as Hashem sees fit. And here is what I want to kind of end off with, and that is taking a leap of faith. So I don't know if this is true for everyone, but I know it's true for every single story I have read about people who made it in business. People who um, went from not having enough money to suddenly being really successful. There always was that moment where they had to take a leap of faith. They had to take a risk, something that was unknown, right? Because if you're going to stay with the known, you're not going to have change. And if you want something to transform or be different, then you have to go into the unknown. And that's always scary for people. But if you're not willing to do it, 
you really lose that opportunity. You close a lot of doors for yourself. I personally took my big leap of faith a year ago. I had been working for 10 years in the hospital in different departments. And I've longed for a very long time to have just my own therapy business, to just have a private practice. And I was kind of waiting and waiting until I would have enough money and savings, enough, 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 until it would feel like the safe time to leave my job and take that leap into just having my own practice. And it got to a point where I really wasn't there, but I needed to leave. It was the right time for me. I felt it on every level. I, I said to Hashem, I need to do it now. My parents were sick at the time. I was doing a lot of traveling. I just couldn't afford to have to ask a boss every single time I wanted to take off. And I knew I needed to do it. And I really davened. And it was very, very scary for me. But I did it. And Hashem pulled me through. And it happened very quickly. I started to you know, make much more income from my private practice than I had been making before that. Um, and it, it was very unexpected, but it, I knew I needed to do it. I job in, I talked to Hashem, and then I just took the jump and I'm very, very happy that I did. So everyone has to take some kind of risk like that. Um, I've taken other risks since then. For example, I, I've invested in different courses to help me launch this new business, this business coaching program. Um, and it, sometimes it's money you don't have, or you, you know, you don't really know if it's worth it, or it feels like more than you can handle but but if you if you take those opportunities when they come your way then you really um you're allowing yourself to have an opportunity for change and transformation for you it might be twenty dollars for someone else it might be twenty thousand but i want to encourage you that if an opportunity is in front of you and it seems like just right or like your chance to have something be really really different or get really really better take it take it don't be afraid and ask Hashem to help it work out. And Davin, Davin, Davin. So pulling it all together, I want to say to you that making money in 2018 does not involve some of the sacrifices it used to require. Making money in 2018 does not require us to engage in aggressive or power-based selling. And having enough money for you and your family will enhance your spirituality. With the right process, which I teach in my coaching programs, sales can be approached from a perspective of mutuality, right? Two people giving to each other. With the right process, we can walk someone through their ambivalence about change without forcing anything on them. And this, a lot of this is about listening and letting people talk through their mixed feelings and not getting defensive or pushy, but just helping them be able to process. And there are ways to leverage our resources that give us more bang for our buck. For example, you get much more done when you're in an energized state than when you're not. I want to remind you that Hashem is not limited. Results come when we trust in Hashem. Don't be too attached to a given hishtadlis or result. And don't miss out on an opportunity because you're afraid to take a leap of faith. So here are some things you can do right now to apply what we've learned today, right? Because if you hear um, a talk and you don't take action or do something different, then you might lose it. So I want, I want to encourage you to take action. Practice an abundance mindset. Practice gratitude. Tell yourself that Hashem is not limited. Be giving. Use resources you already have. And evaluate how you're spending your time and energy and delegate. Delegate the things that are taking too much out of you. Get help. Tie up loose ends, right? All that clutter in your life. Declutter it. Take care of it. And replenish your reserves. Find activities and engage in them that put fuel back in the tank. And this will help you leverage your resources more effectively. You can identify ways that you can take a more feminine approach to sales or business, such as writing ads that feel less salesy and more service-oriented. Or I would encourage you next time you have a client or a potential customer to do more listening, to ask them about what they need and to really listen and to let go of your agenda to sell to them or to, you know, want to make a sale and just to, just to have a relationship with them or an exchange around what their needs are. Do some established and take a leap of faith. I say to you, grab the next great opportunity that comes your way. Don't miss the signs. If Hashem puts it in front of you, take it. And tie up some loose ends that are sitting in the back of your mind, for example, bills that are unpaid, 
decisions that need to be made or emails that need to be responded to. So I have two coaching packages, um, two coaching programs right now that can help you revise your whole approach to your business and your lifestyle. I'm just gonna really quickly tell you about that. The foundations package is perfect for women who wanna launch a new business, but aren't really sure if they can succeed, find the motivation or set it all up anytime soon. This is also good for women who are providing a service already, but don't know how to turn it into a real business. So maybe you're a therapist or in some sort of helping profession, and you know you have a gift and you know that you can help people, but you don't really know how to run the business side of it or market it effectively. All the foundations we'll work on in the foundation package will set you up to quickly begin making money in a viable, realistic way. These foundations will also guide all of your marketing decisions and processes for your business. And foundations is all about creating what you want and having a framework for making money while doing what you love in a completely balanced way. So we're gonna look at who you are, what your vision is, what your priorities are, what your personality is, what energizes you and puts you in flow. We're gonna package it all in a way that helps you own your worth and that gives you a realistic way to start working towards your ideal lifestyle. You will get in the foundations program, um, you'll get help to create your vision for your ideal lifestyle. We'll identify what's realistic in terms of creating a plan for your business. We'll work through self-limiting beliefs about money, insecurities, doubts, and money management habits that may be getting in your way. We'll figure out who your ideal client is, who you would really love to work with and would feel comfortable serving. We'll work on knowing how to package your value and really start to own your worth. We'll do market research to come up with a viable business offer and identify three ways to test your ads. We'll write ads that draw your ideal customer to you like a magnet. And we'll work on creating a sales process that's individualized just for you that never leaves you feeling like you have to ask people for money in a way that you're uncomfortable with. I also have a business intensive. In the business intensive, we'll meet online or in person for a three hour session and review every aspect of your business and marketing. This is for you if you already have a business idea, but you need to bring in more money, tweak your marketing, Master your feelings about sales calls, work through a money mindset block, figure out an effective funnel, or simply get help to identify what isn't working so you no longer have to guess. I will use my analytic skills to quickly hone in on core issues that may be easy to solve but are getting in your way. So I'm going to analyze your business, and I'm going to work with you to, to tweak whatever needs to be tweaked so the whole thing just runs more smoothly. And I promised you two free gifts. So I've created some amazing forums using a platform called Slack to discuss the issues we talked about today in more detail. You'll get access to journal assignments to help you work through your money mindset, as well as advice for getting clarity regarding your business, whether you already have one or are thinking of starting one. I'm going to give three free months of access to anyone who watched this webinar today. Okay, you're just going to email me. I'm going to give you my email address in a minute and you tell me that you watched my webinar and you're going to get your free, free months to be in Slack. It's kind of like Facebook or an online platform where people post and, and respond to each other and things like that. I've also set aside some time in the next two or three days to speak with you one-on-one -on -one about how you can apply this framework to your situation today. We'll discuss whether any of my coaching programs can help you, but there will be no pressure to buy unless we both feel that it could really be helpful to you. And I will, um, I will really listen to you during the call and help you identify what you want to work on and get a little bit more clarity by the end of the phone call. So whether you decide to work with me for coaching or not, no pressure. I'm going to give you my full attention during that one-on-one, -on -one, and we're really going to talk things through. So here's how to access your free gift. If you want to join Slack, you can email me at K at fromdreamers.com. And to set up your one-on-one -on -one phone call, you can go to my booking page at fromdreamers.as.me slash. And if you want to learn more about my coaching, coaching packages, you can go to fromdreamers.com slash coaching dash packages. I'm gonna just leave this here for one minute in case you wanna write any of those addresses down. Okay, again, so you can join Slack for free for three months. You can get a one-on-one -on -one phone call with me. You just need to book it. It's only gonna be available for the next few days. 
and you can learn more about my coaching packages if you want to work with me more comprehensively to really go through you know your business and make a plan that feels good for you so why am i doing this well i love to see women like myself feel empowered i love to help people get what they want just gives me a good feeling when people really want something and they can have it. And I tell them, you can have this, please. I, I just feel good when I do that. Um, and if my coaching program is a good fit for you, this will be a chance for us to have been brought together and to talk about it so that we can make that, um, that plan together for helping you with your business. And I'm sure I'm going to learn something from you too. And that's, that's why I'm really putting this offer out there. So thank you for joining me today. And I can't wait to hear from you. If you have questions, please also feel free to email me again at Merle K at from dreamers.com. Take care.